I'm not sure I've done everything that will make it all work, but um, I'm Sue Answorth and I'm from Lincoln University and I've got three things to talk to you about uh, very briefly today. Um, can I ask first of all, could you just stick your hand up if you are a high school teacher because I'm specifically... Oh good, there are some. Great, okay. <laughs> I'm specifically Not talking to you. <laughs> Uh, I was a high school teacher myself, I was a biology teacher at Burnside High School until um, I received a teaching fellowship, Royal Society of New Zealand Teaching Fellowship in 2005 and then to my shame I never went back, so uh, I know you work harder than anybody. Um, so the three things I want to talk about, first of all I want to encourage all you science teachers to go back into your science classes and tell them what I'm going to tell you about Lincoln University. I hope you know where it is. <laughs> so it's about 10k, probably just a little bit more south of Christchurch, and I'll show you on the map just in case. Um, this was originally an agricultural college. This was the main building. This is now Ivy Hall, which is a superb library facility with lots of computer labs, multimedia facilities. Um, the campus is absolutely extraordinary, especially in the spring and summer. It's um, I don't know if there would be any other one of the um, eight universities in New Zealand that could beat it. Um, the points of difference. What I'd just like to tell you about Lincoln University. First of all, our small class sizes. So this morning when they were talking about 1,600 students, I thought, well, there's obviously potential. Some students would like a small class size. We've only got... Um, 16 students to every staff, that's our ratio, which I think is really quite, quite great for student learning. We, we use real contexts for learning, I won't go into the details now. The um, industry-focused scholarships which have been introduced, I know Paul Callahan is one of the speakers that's coming I think tomorrow, or has been known to say New Zealand is a theme park and a farm. Well. Lincoln University is really satisfying some of these uh, needs that New Zealand has in agriculture for the land-based industries. So that's a good reason to study there. Um, you can tailor your degree. So you can do a major. If you're doing a major, for example, in agriculture, but you've got a, a, an interest in um, information technology, let's say, you can, you can still do your agriculture and you can do a minor subject in ICT. So... You can tailor your degree to suit your interests. One of the absolutely most important features I think of Lincoln is the open door policy. I find it really annoying because I can't think with the door open and people talking over the photocopier, but every door is open and, and uh, students just walk in and talk to you as they require. The staff, and I'm sure Otago, are also approachable and friendly, but no appointment is necessary for uh, meeting up with the staff. Excellence in research, which drives the teaching. The programs are all applied. And what I find wonderful is the free car parking, being a regular visitor to Canterbury and trying to actually get a car park. So, what does this mean with regard to chemistry and biochemistry? The degrees at Lincoln are applied with both the laboratory work and the theory directly related to the land-based industries. And this has two distinct benefits. Basically, very easy to work with an experiment on living systems as opposed to biochemistry allied to humans where a raft of ethical approvals are needed. And also gives graduates the skills and understanding of the operation and importance of New Zealand's largest industry sector, the ag and hort sectors. So, what I would like to say is that our graduates are more employable. And I think a lot of... High school students are now looking at the end result. They are, are wanting to go into a degree course that's going to give them a well-paid and rewarding career. And our graduates are getting jobs in Australia where I believe they just cannot satisfy the demand um, themselves. And also, obviously, it's an international ticket to, to going overseas. Um, now, that was one strand, Why I want you to tell, what I want you to tell your your science students about. Um, some of the programs that we offer, and I'll go through this quickly because I'm not a marketing and liaison person, but these are some of the science programs that are available. 
and um, obviously the university requirements you will all be familiar with with that so the other um, hat I'm wearing I run the science outreach program which is equivalent to Kay's program here at Otago and I'm trying to build up resources on this website so I have a card that I would like you to take away with you and anything that's on the website you're very welcome to use with your classes there's resources for agriculture for ecology um, there's lots of presentations that the staff, the Lincoln staff, have, have given me when they have done a presentation to one of my teacher workshops, for example. Uh, so you're more than welcome to download uh, anything you would like. There's also a copy of this DVD, which was the science outreach offering to teachers last year. This is actually an interactive computer program for uh, possum uh, control. And um, I sent a copy to every high school in New Zealand, but I think it will be the same old story. Whoever got it, snaffled it, put it in their drawer, and, and I'm always getting queries. And we didn't get one, but... I wrote a month ago. Aha! <laughs> Someone cleaned out a drawer, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you can put this onto your network, and I think the, the kids love it because you're, you're controlling possums, you're using various techniques, and you're limited by the amount of funding that you've got. You're, you're a doc um, worker, and uh, so you have to be cost effective. So I hope that the kids will find it useful for junior science or, or perhaps even up to level two biology. Um, so uh, with regard to chemistry, we run, just as Kay does, we run on-campus practical labs so that students in year 12 or 13 mainly can get their hands on some sophisticated equipment that they don't have at school. This is Kashmir High School. They're actually looking at the sulfur dioxide level in wine. And um, here's some more Kashmir High School. They're quite impressed with the flash way of dispensing 10 or 20 millilitres using these bottles, which things like that, they just don't have the opportunity at school. Um, looking at the same sort of lab as Kay does here, the biochemistry DNA lab, we do a whodunit lab. This is Burnside High School, and using the micro pipettes is a great thrill, as she, she suggested. Again, because these things cost so much money, they're not available at school. So we have schools coming again through the holidays to do these labs. Um, this is St. Thomas of Canterbury and gloves. Big highlight, selecting what size gloves and putting the gloves on um, part of the day. Um, here we've got Rangi Ruru, they're just running their gel and um, I think these labs are very popular. I really am having difficulty to accommodate all the schools that want to come. But so far we have been successful in um, accommodating everybody. We run these labs as Kay does in the um, our student.